Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogbot 333 and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the new world last phase of your past, the state of Guangdong. In the last video, we started working on some housing. Got a nice ho housing order in its past. Um, got that pretty well figured out. Meanwhile, uh, we're also working on uh, working on our police station and setting up a uh, intelligence network. So it's all coming along decently well, I think. We'll get our own intelligence network coming up. Official government of the Russian state. Macedonia quiet. Economic st well. I think we'll be able to pass that. Ustasolsk is taking a W. Um, I don't care. What's your favorite? What is your favorite non-Tabby Warlord, Kev? I'm 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 curious what your answer is. Cause I need a I need to start off with non not Tabby. So figure that. Be honest. I think that's Matsushita. Stain is finally gone. I think it's right between the Yakuza and the Triads, actually, but that's okay. Down the mountain, snaking the along the coast, all the way to. Ch from Chaozu to Shenzhen, the road sprouts, spilling and splitting. Rod met, met Lam's gaze as uncle's car passed by, kicking dust into their eyes and passive faces. Cement la air lay as laid aside the reeds. The visage was silhouettes of the men, helmet heads helmeted and wrapped in bandanas, sir seemed to sear Lam's soul. They dug the earth and leveled it out, reinforcing the shallow with concrete, piling dirt into the embankments where the terrain was so low. In the driver's seat, Lamb's uncle held a cigarette in his hand as he adjusted the steering wheel. The ramshackle car would judder and sputter at points, prompting them to stop. At those junctures, his mother would look sadly into the wilderness, her eyes dr drifting to the shrinking mountains to the east. Home was now farther and farther away. Lamb missed the rush of the Han River. The road was quiet, save for the buzzing of late summer cicadas. As he got closer to Shenzhen, the left side of the road tapered into beaches, white sands beyond which was the blue-green sea. The distant steam whistled bit it into the air with an audible screech. When they arrived, they decided to eat chicken rice at the bustling market. As Lam ate his food, careful not to cross his chopsticks, his uncle began to excitedly explain the history of his Shenzhen market. Capital, Chen Jitong. Modernizations, importers across the sea. China for the Chinese. Mother and child sat listening, smiling politely at every remark. When the waiter returned with their tea, all Lam could remember was a steam rising from the brown liquid along a faintly sweet smell. A lone beacon in a long tunnel of darkness. Where is... I think I just realized, I don't know where Shenzhen is. IRL. Is it Sanbi? It's not Santo. Would it be Sanbi here? This is Guangzhou, Macau, Hong Kong. Where is Shenzhen? The Dem Viakers, Ravbog, that is Shukshin of the Second World. Tabby's are so cartoonishly evered as to be right there in SS tier. It's like right beside Guangzhou. Okay, so. Is it this one or this one? One or the other, I think. Mo Mei. It's Mao Ming, I think. Tokan. Um. Okay. Okay, I got you now. I understand. Oh man, we are 0.3 away from getting that. We're so close and yet so dang far. Shield broken. Okay, that's deficit. I 
What do we got? Next, National Focus. Shenzhen's riding on the Hong Kong board, basically. Oh, okay, I understand. I, uh, that makes sense, I suppose, actually. Do I want to go right into this? Ooh, so we could remove Hideki's monthly corruption gain, potentially, by doing that. That's actually pretty cool. Hmm. We'll go ahead and do... Economic stuff. We'll go ahead and feed the extra mouths. Mandatory urbanization has created a new problem for us. We'll have fewer farms, farmers to grow food to feed our people. Since many will be sent to work in factories, there'll be less people to grow food to feed everyone. In order to make up for this loss, we have set up food quotas higher than before. Normally, this would mean something that would put the financial safety of our agricultural sector at risk, but given that our farmers will use the abandoned plots and farms left by the factory workers, they can manage these new quotas. It will even help modernize and mechanize the equipment of the farmers to make their jobs even easier, but this would have to be kept quiet. If Go Khan himself a Japanese name for Shenzhen or it's a different city, Shenzhen was tiny just before a few decades ago. Right. Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? Because the CCP basically made Shenzhen, I know. Because it was nothing before, and then it became this huge fucking city. Uh-oh. So we're not getting access to American markets. Um, that much is clear. We have, a uh, Super Mario. In West Russia, which is good, because Nintendo's gonna need some inspiration. Chinese support of our government's actually increasing, which is nice to see. It's not going to keep increasing for not long, it seems. But it seems... We have met our economic check, so we should be good. Uh, conflict in South America. That's interesting. We can remove the restrictions. Or we could head over to here. I think we'll go ahead and update our surveillance. Or do we want to... Let's do nothing to hide, actually, I think. Target corruption. I don't know. There's a lot of options we need to figure out. Hmm. Let's go ahead and ensure Matsushita dominance. 
No matter how critical or important of the roles of the other corporation and council may be, it's essential that it remain the undisputed central force. Therefore, it's crucial that we begin to expand our extensive influence even further. The acquisition of vacated properties, expansion of production into other markets, and a robust and vigorous show of force in the council itself may all be necessary steps towards the entrenchment of Matsushita's dominance over on the ed competitive economic stage of Guangdong. While the other corporations are engaging in trifling squabbles, we shall seize the advantage. It's best for us not to delay and waste precious time, it is the key to our success. Bolivia moves to retake the east. Well, would you look at that? Chief Executive Matsushima Masahara leaned back in his chair, smiling faintly as Council General Takashima Masuo took a seat opposite him, only with a 65 copy of Guanhong's economic data. They both knew the thick tome's content advances, and Takashima only made a cursory show of idly turning its pages before setting aside. Guangdong has met all of its economic targets for last year. Takashima said a wry smile, tugging on his lips. Just for output, factory investments, export revenue. All indicators show an economy performing at its best. Tokyo is very pleased. Mas Ma Matsushita nodded, letting Council General Sprays settle comfortably with him. Of course, Guangdong had met its expectations set out for it by stake stakeholders. Between its policies and the efforts of the companies, Guangdong had proven it could perform economic alchemy. It would do so for how long it was required. The two men talked for another 15 minutes, the two largely exchanging compliments and conversing in generalities about the coming year's economic initiatives. The meeting was on course to join early, as the conversation petered out with Takashima fiddling with his glasses, waiting for excuse. Get back to work. <laughs> you just noticed that one. Yeah. Um, three extra seats for Matsushita. Excellent. And next we have to get a little over six billion GDP. I can do that. Twenty-six trillion. Six billion. We 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 have that B already. Well, no, no billion. Twenty-six billion. Trillion we are not close to. I, I forgot numbers for a second. Uh, I, I found I think I found that on um Reddit. It was like on one of those like horrible Facebook meme posts. And I think whoever posted it for it, uh thought it was a serious post, and I am ninety five percent sure that was just a shit post. Excuse me. Hmm. Well, that's weird. I don't know what he even did there. It's Matsushita Matsuhara sat up in his office, listening to reports from his factional whip, he felt trepidation rise from somewhere deep within him. That grinning wrench that Komai had been busy with Hitachi's money, it seems. The whip was reporting many late-night meetings with brown paper bags, changing hands, with Hitachi representatives entering the office side inking Kent by Tai officers and not coming out for hours. According to the whip, this has been going on for weeks now with no sign of abating. Results as as far as they could tell, consisted solely of an uptick in legislative council seats, emerging pro-Hitachi sentiment among the military. Hitachi was getting a Favorable amendments stacked onto routine ordinances, but seemingly nothing more. Long after the whip had left his office, Matsushita found himself wondering what it all meant. Itachi was putting some serious money into this, whatever that this was, and Komai was clearly bringing all his unsavory talents to bear. But why? Were they going to propose an ordinance? Make a bid for IGA contracts? Surely whatever they were planning could not possibly justify the lengths they were going to in order to make it happen. The rats come up from under the floorboards. Monitor the moments to make sure they not entrench themselves in the leg co. I do not like that. Not one bit. Not a single bit. Downsize these guys. Yeah, huh.
Okay, music. Well, I think that's a good sign, that uh, Hitachi thing, to get working on corruption. Let's get working on monitoring their corruption. Corruption, an abominable, heinous plot in Guangdong's administration, running rampant throughout the Legislative Council ever since the tenureship of Taich of Suzuki. It's been thoroughly integrated itself into the Council throughout the years, cash finding its way into the pockets, while it's coffers the most unremarkable secretaries to the highest echelons of corporate officers. With such an integrated Council, it's impossible to rid ourselves of it at once, but can begin to monitor its spread and begin minor attempts to eventually stamp it out. Increased penalties for notice corruption and the rooting out of certain per persons known for corruption would serve as a fine beginning, as would benefit our budget by making governance cheaper in general, and would affect the other companies a lot more than ours. Civil War in Indonesia. Is that going to be our opportunity to get some rifles going? Is this just supposed to happen? I don't know. Samocles was so memorably shown by the Dionysus of Syracuse. Power is never secure. It's an intangible thing, twisting and curling, planting itself in the minds of men and dissipating seemingly at random. It's the image of a fish refracted through water, never quite where it seems to be, never quite behaving the way you expect. It takes cunning ambition and drive to manage a touch of power. It takes genius and good luck to capture it fully, to bend it to one's will in such a way that it remains unchallenged. Even then, time's ever whirling stream will, will, at some point or another, wash it all away. No such good luck has been afforded a chief executive. His three challengers, the barricade is circling him, have not given up on their efforts to oust him and replace him with one of their own. With their seemingly limitless, limitless supply of funds, they chip away the exterior of Matsushita Masaharu's edifice, one nibble at a time. Ireland's economy? It's pretty good. With every piece that falls away at the from the model, if the chief executive's abstract measure of authority over legislative council weakens slightly, the will of the wisp darts away, perhaps providing an opportunity for him as opponents to grasp, but should they have a wits to do so. As favors are exchanged and opinions swayed on the council floor, Matsushita Masahari must intervene to shore up his position, or see his grip on history's coattails slip loose, leaving the mercy of cold, dark tide. Control mind's no easy task. So we have just about the same amount of seats that we had before. Um, all nine years he'd been with the company, director Matsushita Masahara could feel the energy of 1949 was singularly exuberant. Perhaps it was a crowding Matsushita Electric's offices by the employees, freshly demobilized. Perhaps it was a promise of greater capital, with funds redirected from more time used to peaceful investments. Or perhaps it was a promise of new opportunities in Asia, freely, freshly liberated from the West, and asking built anew from the ashes of Japan's holy war. It was all that anyone could talk about at board meetings, as everyone reveled in the exuberance of victory. No matter how familiar Masahara had become had become with the Osaka accent. He had trouble keeping up with when the excitement reached such a fever pitch. As wild ideas far outpaced rationalities. There will need to be priorities. Konosuke, silence the board of singer injection. Is there an expansion plan that we can discuss? China is the only choice. No other market match its size, resources, and available labor. Masaharu said, prefacing his statement with a performative cough. He instantly felt the attention of the room turn to him, a spotlight worthy of his first venture in business history. Then China, the government's discussions on opening Guangdong province, the most populous and prosperous part of China, Japanese business is an unprecedented opportunity. Please refer to the materials. As Masahara walked the board through his presentation, he glimpsed Konosu Konosuke's wry smile out of the corner of his eye. Fortune favors the bold. Am 
Motherfuckers. Goshu Yakuza counted their earnings from the streets. Protection, fraud, and a hundred other crimes. In Hong Kong, bags of opium flowed through the streets like water on the Pearl River, bringing poison comfort to the masses. In Macau millions changed hands in seconds with the reel of a single tile. Silicon years in full swing business in all sectors of Guangdong boom. Careful dance is played between the force of order and crime that strides in Kuza, dance, and fight in the underworld. Below the feet of law abiding citizens, from lowly laborers to the chief executive himself, there lies corruption. Parasitic, pervasive, seductive. We're still holding on to control in all these states, which is nice. Uh, but it's getting complicated a little bit. It's getting pretty hectic. All right, next we'll do... Honestly, more economy stuff might be the play. Yeah, I think... Well, maybe. I don't know. Might set ourselves up for this one, but I don't think we have the seats to do it yet. Although, actually... Hmm. Okay, I understand. I think I understand. So, we don't get it going... Until we get choose one of these for this one. Still gonna be rough to figure out though. Um, yeah. I think we, we wanna might wanna wait a little bit. We'll remove the restrictions first. Get a few extra seats. Yeah, we'll remove restrictions. The new workers being shipped into the factory will be great economic success. However, with all these new laborers, we don't have enough homes for them. And with such large numbers of people we will attend, send to the cities, we could have a real homeless crisis on our hands. The solution to this problem is rather simple. Remove regulations on construction, encourage businesses to build housing and apartments for our, the new workers. Our economy would benefit, our laborers would have homes. Sure, this means the houses aren't as safe as they could be, but living in a house that could hurt you is much better than living on the streets. Sure. Military coup in Cambodia. Coming up on the new product cycle. Wonderful, wonderful. Could bribe the triads. Can extra police influence in Shokan. But now the Yakuza are in charge of Shokan. True. I don't think I can repeat that for the monetization, but true. Brief memories. Early autumn. Chin, chill winds blew seaward, rattling the wind boards of the lighthouse. Clear sky, faint clouds, white against the open blue. The breeze swept the dead out leaves outside like a broom latched to a whip. Lama remembered the circles of relatives among whom he sat. The smell of freshly fried mantu waffled from the center. Remember the words they traded over buns dunked in condensed milk. Long ago, long ago, said a relative. When the land team with barbarians and war's rage, our folks forded to the rivers, climbed the mountains, saw the sea. In brocades, they sued the silk and went as far as Rome. And the emperor, ears and gold, ordered us westward towards the expanse. I know, he said, chewing mouthfuls of crunchy bun tingled, tinged with sweet milk. Grandfather told us that already. Uncle won't stop blabbering about it neither. Laughter proceeded. Someday, the uncle said, someday you will work in the family business, threading the patterns you will do, in the Chaozhou style. 
where you wander, people will know. Oh, him, they will say. He's from Chaozhou, that Ah Chun. Are you ready? He nodded. Yes, uncle, I'll be ready. He gave a smile. Promise made in sweet times, unbuckled by the force of time. And the Far East has finally had some action. It was about time. Ooh, our Ch Chinese support in the Pearl River is actually doing pretty well. Elsewhere, maybe not so much, but... What are they doing in there? I thought maintenance wasn't going to happen until... Xi Ming muttered to himself as he leaned out of the door. Before his eyes are a few construction workers, hard hats and all. Armed with clipboards, they survey the apartment, talking indistinctly among themselves. He leans in harder, tries to see what they're talking about. He heard the rewards, demolition, and sky... What? It's at this point that a worker, looking confused, approaches him. I thought the building was supposed to be vacated. It's supposed to have left by now. Call me check. Call me check. But th there was nothing. Chi Ming looked around hesitantly. If, if there was anyone there to back him up. As though she heard his prayers, the old woman living two doors down from him, he remembers her name is Chok Jing, steps out. What's going on? For a moment, the three of them look at each other, blinking. Then they raise a cacophony. Well, I... We have a now. The workers break through, sighing to himself. Chi Ming doesn't think he wants to be here. Look, this building's be demolished. We have a permit. He waves around the piece of paper with an official-looking letterhead. Though neither Chi Ming nor Chiu Qing catch exactly what it says. For the sake of your own safety, I think you should go. He narrows his eyes, reminiscent of a hawk, having decided to spray. At the same time, one of them starts setting dynamite on the walls, reinforcing his veiled threat. Chi Ming and Xiao Qing look at each other, then return to their rooms, taking all they can. For Chi Ming, it's his cat, all his clothing and bedding, and all the food he can muster. He sights Xiao Qing, slightly encumbered by the bag of belongings, dragging dragging a bag behind her. The two walk out of the building, they hear the noise of an excavator trampling their, its way to their home. There's no turning back. Um, I mean, it helps that we boosted the shit out of Comey Kev. That does help. Um, Momai in Hong Kong. Warlord stage, rather. True. Polish each pearl. Long's innovation. This would start with 32. Right, yeah, they took... Yeah. True. That is fair. Um, we'll hold on to this in case we need the political power. Let's placate the opposition, I guess. We'll start working towards this slowly. Though our goals ultimately include absolute control and domination of the Legislative Council, remain quite a challenging feat. Currently, the co corporations of the Council is holding an increasing amount of influence and directly challenging the block of opposition to be a foolish and disastrous decision. In order to maintain our current position, we have to appease the other corporations, or at least do so on paper. We'll grant them limited leverage and powers on the Council, surely enough to be comfort much of the representatives. Rest assured, these minor concessions are temporary measures to ensure that resistance doesn't stif stiffen against us, and can and will be changed accordingly. Accordingly, nobody can impose a rule if we kill them. Yeah? If only usurped by the Wehrmacht? That's the middle. Poland got strong-armed, it could be worse. Could be much worse. Hmm. 
Well, we of course want Matsushita. Alright, um, target market. Uh, no Turks this time. I say we do... Probably the Brazilians. Let's do the Brazilians, let's go around. Brazilians, friend of the channel. Played them back in, um, after Cold Southern Springs dropped. Back when it was just Cold Southern Springs. Above average profitability. Push for launch forward. Get a little extra profitability. We'll do this and that. And that as well. And here we'll do that, that. How support in Macau, actually? Let me check that. I want to check. Macau. 5% hit. It's actually not too bad right now, so I think we can afford that hit. I'm getting used to new Burgundy borders by now. Yeah, I always prefer these, the new borders to the old one. I mean, it actually gives a, a reason why there's a North Paris and a South Paris. That's the main thing that I always bug me about the old ones, just why there wasn't a, uh, you know. Old Burgundy was kind of iconic. Yeah, kind of. Kong Dong. I mean, just because it's iconic, it doesn't mean it's good. Let's let's be honest. Uh, average right now. Sony loaned some uh, engineers out from Japan. That'll get us pretty well well up there. Do a little bribing for airtime as well. I think Indonesia is going to give us a next little uh, intervention opportunity. Which I'm very much looking forward to. I think I've ever man seen Manch Homo. German Eastern. We'll do promises for the moderate executives. Gives us an extra seat. One that we just lost otherwise. The mire of opinions and ideologies of the Legislative Council, a growing passel of corporate executives, has developed worldviews that are foreign to a sizable portion of Guangdong's existing corporate realm. These moderates, who have adopted beliefs contradictory to prevailing status quo, rallying against what they deem exploitation, most of whom are part or lingering around Morita Aiko Akio Sony. Though they may seem like overly sentimental, bleeding hearts, their support would be a great asset towards ensuring that our position as head of the council is maintained and to keep them satiated as to not cause any unnecessary agitation. Chief Executive Matsushita would personally arrange a meeting with them. Hopefully some promises and honeyed words will do. Let's see, um... This is coming along... Middling quality. Doing massive press conference. We'll go for a little bit more. If... It's funny. I want the. I don't know if I want 
the series go on for a bunch of parts. But at this point, the only way it can alleviate that or stop that is going to be... Uh... So Indonesia always been that unstable, pondered Matsushita Masaharu, his fingers constantly tapping against his desk. He didn't remember it being on the verge of a civil war, yet the country had devolved into a mess right in front of his eyes. But also Japan's. It's also certainly going to be a black guy on the spear, but... Fresh conflict would meant new pass testing grounds with PTRG. Um, he picked up the receiver and dialed the number of several military commanders stationed back in Japan. Much as expectation, the PTRG was giving significantly more freedom resources to operate with. Losing control of Indonesia was bad enough as is, but the rebels managed to find a way to overthrow Sukarno's government. The fallout would be disastrous. That is for the Empire of Japan. Guangdong has always been a had a stake in about churning a profit, and war was no different. Chief Executive picked up several reports from the BTRG team detailing new armor prototypes that companies had sent him recently. With the expertise of a scientist in both the PTRG and the companies, getting a bit of luck to extend Indonesia's incoming civil war, Guangdong would be able to collect all the data he needed in order to make a decision on which product to support. If anything, he could use the comparison between the base IGA units and the PTRG unit to drive up the sale price even more when he sold the prototypes back to the mainland. Failing to buy the prototype's worthiness would negatively impact Guangdong's financial and political standing. Thankfully, Guangdong has no tolerance for failure whatsoever. Well. Or, of course, subsetting Matsushita. Compare Guangdong's four potential chief executives to Jeremy's your potential fears. Who would they be? Um, Akio is Gang of Four. Uh, Sony is the Gang of Four. Matsushita is probably more of a Borman, like a reformist tinged Borman. Um, Fujitsu is Spear. And Hitachi is Hydric. I don't think Goring really has a good comparison, at least current Goring, to Matsushita. Do we have an armor guy? We have a cavalry leader. I have an inflexible strategist. Where is this one guy? Um, you want to send it over here, right? Yeah. So we need a... Usual stuff, actually, now that I realize it. Nothing too atypical from what I'm used to. So we'll get of extra Hitachi bonuses. That's Sony. Gonna prioritize household electronics. Um, let's see. A lot of the stuff is still gonna be expanding, mainly uh, interest-wise. So I want to keep an, uh, something to look out for uh, product quality. Well, the front beat the um, Arians actually. Okay, where are we at here? Um... Here, I think we'll go ahead and we'll take a hit to, um... R&D, I think. And then what do we want to do over here? <clears throat> I 
the Greater East Asia Ministry is pleased to announce that the state government of Guangdong has volunteered to send a research division to Indonesia to help the Greater East Asia Code Prosperity Sphere in its fight against the forces of Western imperialism. General Nagano Shigeto put the paper down to made. Anyone with a bit of sense could tell why Guangdong had really volunteered to send soldiers, his soldiers, out of that tropical hellhole. It was all just to test some of those new technological horrors they called weapons. Just wonderful, wasn't it? Sure, the executives were happy to have an easy opportunity to profit off in preservation, pure glory, and let get in Tokyo's new gra good graces. But Nagano saw things differently. Money didn't mean anything to him. To him, all this Indonesia volunteer nonsense was just a boondoggle. Men being sent to fight a good fight, but with suspect weapons, even more suspect leadership. The hell of Malaya was proof enough of that. But what did Nagano... What choice did Nagano have? None. Mine? It's not to question. Why? Is it? Damn it all. We're doing some mountainous operations, I think. Armenian Revolt. Ooh. Look at that. Look at that. I think we're going to get our mountains figured out soon. Let's have river crossings to worry about. That we're getting some bonuses towards. Ooh, ooh. Uh, river or mountainous operations were done. Okay, so it's clear over here, but raining up there. It's a little annoying. But uh, that's alright. Did we get river crossings? Not quite. Golden used to feel untouchable. He piloted a tank that the Indonesians can never pierce, while his gunners dealt retribution with hails of bullets. Then his corpse was given the privilege of testing Matsushita's newest innovations. Not a loader gun missile. This is vigorously lauded by an overexcited supervisor. as a tremendous increase to your tank's firepower. Well, he had neglected to mention that the increased ammunition came at the expense of most of the armor. Although his gunner was delighted by the explosive sect, we'll go to watch a single sh stray shell emulate another tank in his unit. Go to try to clear his mind of the fear, knowing that the loss of focus was now fatal. It was just settled, go to breathe a sigh of relief. Another battle was over, and his tank and life were miraculously still intact. This enemy fortification was annihilated, only ash and rubble remained. He might have celebrated, and I not got glanced back and seen the charred steel remnants that littered the battlefield. Brown and Gota returned to formation and began trundling. Back to base. Back in his office, a corporate supervisor smiled with glee as he read all the reports. Recent performance surpassed all expectations. By all metrics, the upgrade was success. Higher-ups were being pleased. The barracks were stifled by silence. Um, for two more days. We're gonna get quality up there. Hire some more skilled engineers. See, you know, rewards got an update at some point. I think it was with the new toolbox theory, I want to say. When it got redone. Maybe not toolbox theory, but one of the more recent up updates. I feel like this war is only important from the front of wars Java. Um, I don't know if you're entirely... He might have a point there. Well, we need... We could go up here, because there's a storm going on. You also need to figure out something temperature-wise. It's too temperate up over here. I mean, Kashing, it doesn't get more absurd the more you th It gets more absurd the more you think about it. Matsushita doesn't exactly have the best hearing, yet the unmistakable snarl of Marita Akio outside the office around the 50 steps away from Hallway failed to escape even his ears. That obtuse tourist a meeting with two of us? Or his buddies and let go done with him or something? It's Mrs. Smirk crept across Matsushita's face as he sat in wait behind his desk, always so volatile and vocal about his thoughts, that scoundrel. Maybe you'd want to keep your voice down, Akio. Emerged another voice, evidently more collected and baritone than the rest. At least he's willing to talk, and with the council, 
his hands. We simply don't couldn't risk declaring war on him in the open. If there's any chance we have it swing the establishment in our favor, it's now. We can't afford to let it slip. So this must be Morita's new comrade arms, Li Ka Shing. Matsushita used. Native, newcomer, man cut above his peers in radicalism, yet a cut below in experience in the corporate playground. The council's in his hands? How Matsushita wish it so. The truth is that his grip over corporate representatives is tenuous as ever, proven by the very existence of a true unruly moderate standing outside his door. Whatever reservations he had about those two hours, he had to concede one point. Open political strife in the legislative council could benefit none of them in the long run. That is why he sent out the invitation in the first place. He had his demands, they had theirs. Time for both parties to settle matters in private. Matsushita focused his posture upright. His door creaked open. The two Zhujin of Guangdong strode in shoulder to shoulder. The dry smile on their faces mirroring his own. Good afternoon, gentlemen. As you're already aware, we'll discuss certain proposals. You will find mutually of mutual benefit to us all. May our partnership last forever. Right? 32 seats. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna hear YouTube people. So thanks for always watching. Like, like, dislike, didn't. Leave the comments, feedback, concern. Comment section below. Um. Check out various links down in the description box below as well. And yeah. I'll see you guys as you, uh, later, my friends. Thanks for always watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.